So this is an ad for Anchor. You probably never heard of it or do not care. Well, I'm going to explain what it is and what problems it solves for you. Other companies want you to have a thousand listeners before you get paid and they charge you every single month. But with Anchor, you start getting paid with your first listen and on top of that, it's free to use. They have an app so you don't have to use outdated websites. You can record, edit, and check your analytics all from the app. But Donovan, you're like, damn, I don't want to start a podcast. Why do I need this? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because you have a desire to help other people, right? Or maybe you're not that kind of that, 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 that nice person, right? So maybe you love being the one solving problems. Maybe you want to be the alpha in your group. So everyone has that friend that talks too much or the friend who's always complaining about a nine to five. Or I know you guys have this friend, the one that's always doing something crazy, always has crazy stories, crazy logic, just crazy mind, right? Give them a, a platform to say all those things. Put them on a podcast. Help them make money. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. If anybody knows me listening to this, maybe you will agree with this line. I don't know. It's a possibility. I don't. I'm going to say the line that she said, right? If anybody knows me, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to give it like five to seven seconds. And I'm going to let you guys think of what this person said to me. It's not going to affect me because I've been to situations where I've had friends or who I thought were friends actually more or less have me put in jail. That's why I put it at. They would not vouch for me to not go to jail. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast, where you will see how we turn our life into a living. I want to start off by giving a shout out to the Bamboo Project family. I appreciate everybody for tuning in each week. So uh, this may be your first episode, and if it is, you have a lot of catching up to do. For everybody else, this is episode 37, okay? So for all the people who don't have a YouTube premium account and you want to hear the podcast, you can go and listen to it on multiple major streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, Radio Public, CastBox, Overcast, and Pocket Cast. The link for those audios will be in the description below. And for everyone listening to this podcast who is not watching it on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. It's called the Bamboo Project, okay? So if you go on there, you will see that we have over 200 videos of everything us. What does that mean? We have travel vlogs. We have tutorials of hair, cooking. We have makeup tutorials. We have tips on basketball. We have everything us on that channel, okay? So the Bamboo Project is the YouTube channel. And actually, we've been growing at about... We've been growing at about one subscriber every single day. We're averaging about 3,000 to 4,000 views a month and about 100. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing numbers on there. Like, it's crazy because uh, it took us about a year to get 100 subscribers and we got almost 30 in the last month. So, it's, you know, we're killing them. I'm just excited to see that. And if you want to see our day-to-day behind the scenes of how we make all this stuff happen, you can follow us on social media. Mine is Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. My beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne, A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. Now, we have multiple different projects, okay? So, before I get to that, my Instagram and Twitter are the same thing. Now, back to the multiple projects that we have. We have the food project. We have the music project. We have the clothing project. We have the fitness project, we have the sports project, and we have the Bamboo Project podcast, which you are listening to right now. And you can DM me if you want to get on the phone and have a conversation about something you're going through or a conversation you just want to have. And I will have all of the timestamps for this podcast in the description below. Today is December 1st. It, December 1st. Where's my phone? It's 101. It's 101. Um... So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the time we starting that. We got, we've been doing a lot of things. We've been getting a lot of things done lately. So, uh, I'm starting to sweat. Yeah, I can't do podcasts in a sweater. I'm going to change my sweater to a shirt. Okay, I'm back. All right. This podcast has multiple different segments. We have four major segments. We have the life update, which is when I will give my update of what happened to me and what I went through over the last week. Then we have episode playback, which is when I will go and listen to the episode myself without you guys being there, obviously. And I will then kind of rehash or clear up anything I felt like I didn't say correctly on the last podcast or something I want to address that I said in the last podcast. I'll bring it up on this podcast. 
Then we have Donovan's questions. What is Donovan's questions? Well, Donovan's questions is when I will present you a question that I, I just want people to think about. I'm not going to try and lead you on with my thoughts on it. I'm just going to present you a question. And then we have today's topics. So if you've been listening for the last couple of weeks, you will know that we have not had any Donovan's questions for the last three weeks. And I've explained why. The reason being is that when I don't have time to really think, then I don't really come up with things that I, I'm really curious about. I really get to dig and think deeply about different top, uh, topics and subjects. However, funny enough, this week I do not have Donovan's, uh, I have Donovan's questions. What I do not have are today's topics. I thought I wrote them down, but I don't. However, I do have a lengthy update. And according to Melissa, she said about updates be kind of long either way. So today is going to be an extra long update of what I happened, what I went through and happened to me last week. And just kind of my, my thoughts on what happened uh, last week. So uh, one thing I want to touch on that I haven't really spoken about is anybody that knows us knows that we are on a particular diet. It's called the electric food diet. Uh, it's it's based off of Dr. Sebi, and it's supposed to be eating food that is uh, anti-inflammatory and does not cause mucus, and it's supposed to be natural. We have a lot of different, um, we have a lot of different, what would you call those, videos that we have about it on YouTube. So you can kind of get an idea of what it is that we're talking about, and you can go listen to our last couple of podcasts where we talk about changing our diet. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because we had to change our diet to eat more of the food that we consider bad food. Now, these these things would be like meat. These things would be uh, food that probably has corn in it or corn starch in it. Uh, you know, different kinds of sugars that aren't probably very good for you. A lot of things that we normally would not eat. Normally, Melissa would cook a lot of uh, meals based off of the, the diet that we have and based off of the restrictions of food that we can and cannot eat. However, the problem with that is it's very time consuming. So we're cooking uh, three times a day plus snacks. It it becomes very hard to do anything else throughout the day. So if Melissa wakes up and she makes breakfast and then let's say she see, let's say she makes breakfast at let's say 930. Right. So it's 930. She's making breakfast. We eat breakfast from 930 to, you know, we're eating you know, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. We're eating. We're going to be hungry around like one o'clock. So it's not really a full lunch hungry. It's more like a, I kind of want to snack hungry. But now because we have to make snacks in the house, she would have to go and make snacks to eat for that time. So she would make a snack for one. And this is like I'm talking about a full on I'm, I'm baking, making a snack to eat that's healthy for us. And then by three or four it's lunch. Then again, the same process repeats where now it's five or six, maybe seven and another snack. Then it'd be eight, nine, ten. And then it's dinner. And all of these things are being made from scratch. All the ingredients are being made. They're being prepped in the house. They're being cut. They're being, um, what's the other thing that they call it when you uh, have to like soak it? I guess process. I guess they're being processed um, where it's like you have to soak a lot of the things because they may have, uh, I forgot the word. What's that word that they have? It's like, it's like the stuff and it then needs to be broken down. But there was a word for it that they, like things that are inside of the um, nuts that can absorb your uh, uh, nutrients. anti-nutrients that's yes. what they're called so some foods have anti-nutrients inside of them and you have to process them and processing just means you can soak them in water or you can heat them up things like that to break down those um those chemicals that come is already inside the food whether it's natural or not natural some foods obviously have a protection for things like that so it takes my whole point is it takes a very long time to make these foods right now, as you said before, we're probably we're in the process of getting evicted. So we're trying to make money to pay off the money that we owe for eviction and then also pay for our own debt and pay for money and make enough money to pay for the rent going forward and move and have a better life. So we decided to start doing real estate and particularly we're doing wholesaling. So because we're particularly doing wholesaling, it requires a lot of time from us to do that. That is a very time intensive um part of real estate where you're making a lot of phone calls, you're sitting down talking to agents, you're talking to, uh, depending on how you're doing it, you can be talking to sellers, you can be um, talking to owners of houses, you can be talking to a lot of different people, you're talking to contractors, you're just talking to buyers for the property, it's a lot of people you're on the phone with talking. Not only are you doing that, you're also trying to find property that fit what you're looking for. So that means you have to find a property in a good area that has a good market for selling, 
You have to find a property that fits the numbers. You got to find a property that somebody wants to sell. It's a lot of work, right? So I had said a couple of weeks ago that we were going to change our diet because we needed to make room for for the real estate. Now, one thing I've also said before is that anytime you want something, there's a give and take. This goes back to the whole yin and yang thing where you have to sacrifice something to get something else. That's just how life works. I don't know the universal law behind it, but anytime that you want something, you have to sacrifice something else. And I believe that the bigger sacrifice you make, the better return you'll get on that sacrifice. So we decide, okay, we will sacrifice our food uh, to a certain degree so that we can put more time into real estate. And then once we have the time or even if, once we have the time and then have the money, we will use that to then reinvest into us being able to eat better, whether it be hiring a chef or a cook or something like that to be able to prepare the meals for us. And we can just eat the food and still do the work that we want to do. So that's what we're trying to get at. And it's been working. We, us actually eating foods that don't need as much preparation, like a regular sandwich, maybe, a uh, a ham sandwich, turkey sandwich, a bologna, not bologna, a salami sandwich or a burger or peanut butter and jelly, just things like that that we normally would not eat. It allows us to go, okay, I'm hungry right now. It doesn't have to be a huge task to eat. I can just go make a sandwich and finish working. And I'm actually been able to get a lot of stuff done myself. And we have also been able to just be able to focus more on other things other than, okay, what are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? Oh, man. And then on top of that, another thing too, is because we were mm, because we were waiting, not waiting, because we were eating food that was good for us, right? Whenever we would eat a bad food, we would buy something from outside. So we would buy Papa John's, we would buy chicken, fingers, things like that, uh, wings, whatever the case might be, right? So it's funny because we may eat bad, we may eat good food from for breakfast and lunch and then every night we would have pizza right and then it's it's just costly to pay forty dollars every night for pizza so it was kind of weird because we're still spending a lot of money to buy the food that's good for us to only eat the food that's not good for us at night and then have to deal with the repercussions of eating that bad food which means which is spending a lot of money so now we spend less money on food each week oh is that true Okay, we spend a lot less money on food each week because we're not buying all the things we have to buy. We normally would spend two hundred plus dollars a week on on groceries. Um, to that now would cover breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks, and things like that. So now, we, what do you think we spend now? If we had to just take a weekly guess, what would you say? How much did you say we spend before? Like two hundred plus. It would be way if we if so two hundred is kind of like the norm. Um, including my water and everything like that. Well, yeah, like one one seventy mm-hmm. is the norm. Um, and then you have to think about if we order pizza three times that week, mm-hmm. and pizza typically costs like forty dollars to order. So that's like a three hundred something dollars we're spending on food. Yeah. So now I think now we spend like on Target, which would be like one fifty. Yeah, one fifty, one seventy five. Okay, so yeah, like I was saying earlier, it was weird because we're when. When we were holding on to trying to be healthy and trying to sometimes have bad food, we would end up spending 300 something dollars a week on food because we're trying to buy pizza and things like that. And this is why I like to do my finances because things like this come up and you get to look at it and go, we spent X amount of money last week on food or last month on food. And you know this is what we bought. So every Monday on my Instagram, I'll do something called Money Mondays where I will post what my finances are, what I spent that week because... Like I said, it helps me to keep track of where I'm spending my money at because I may think that, okay, maybe I'm saving money by buying food out from, you know, Papa John's maybe once or twice a week. But in actuality, I'm spending more money because I'm thinking, okay, I'm not buying as much groceries, but I'm still spending that money on pizza. And the worst thing about it is that food goes really quickly. So you don't even notice that you spent money on it because you might buy it on a Monday and finish it by Tuesday morning. And you're like, damn, I spent $40 on food. And you might do that again on Thursday and Saturday. So now it's $120 that you spent and it's gone. And that the food doesn't last you that long. And you're kind of just like, damn, what do I do now? So I realized that since we changed our diet, it's definitely helped us to get a lot more work done. I think it's a lot less stressful because we don't have to really worry about the food that we're eating. And we still do eat some food that are good for us. So we still will have quinoa. We still will have amaranth uh, for breakfast. We still will have... Um, chickpea pasta if we have spaghetti and think and still we'll do burgers sometimes well we haven't really done the, the uh, veggie burgers in a while but 
like I said, because we can, we we decide to let it go instead of being like, okay, we're just going to try and be as healthy as possible. It's allowed us to free up some time. And I don't want anybody to get it confused. This is not what I want to do. I do not want to do this, but it's something that needed to be done for us to be able to get what we need to get to. Um, so we will be going back to the other diet at some point. Um, so like I said, it's definitely working for time management. Now, uh, there's some other things I want to touch on over the last week. This was the Thanksgiving week that just passed. And I'm not sure if everybody else kind of experiences this as well. So it's a weird thing that happens during Thanksgiving or any family events or things like that, where you're meeting people that are related to you. Usually they're older and they may say, oh, I remember you when you were six and all oh, you gotten so big and grown and things like that. Now, for me, I feel very uncomfortable or odd in situations like this because I don't know what to say. I don't know how to I don't know to be like, oh, my God, I don't remember you that well. I, I no, I don't know who you are. And then I have to kind of. Yeah, hey, you. I, I do remember that time that you mm, gave my mom money for pizza. Yeah, I remember that, and it's like it's it's a very awkward situation. So I never really know how to go about it because it's one thing I've noticed that I've gotten older is that those people that I used to think were adults or the mature people are not usually that same situation. They usually have their own stuff going on. They usually have their own craziness in their life that that a person that's responsible wouldn't be doing as a child you don't really know those things now that i'm older when i talk to these people it's kind of like i don't even i don't look at you the same as what i did when i was younger so the reason i'm saying that is because i don't even i don't really have a reason to engage in this conversation as much as i did when i was younger and when i was younger you might when they say hey are you are you in college yeah i'm in college uh, yeah, you know, I'm in high school and I just had prom and they have the whole, oh, that's so great that you, and as a kid, you kind of want to go, yeah, you know, I, I love going to college and blah, blah, blah. As an adult, it's like, I already understand that you're asking me this question because you probably also feel the same way that I feel. You don't know what to say to me. You kind of just like, oh, I'm going to say something. So like I said, it makes me feel very comfortable during these situations and I don't really know how to go about it. Now, another thing that I experienced, which I, this is something I really, really have an issue with. It's like, it's one of those, I have. I think I have a, one of those grind my gears like Peter Griffin from Family Guy. I have a lot of those, right? This is one of those things. So I am at my uh, cousin's house or my aunt's house for Thanksgiving, right? And like I just said, people came over that I'm not familiar with. I don't know. They're my cousin's brother's aunt from the other side of the family. I was brought in by Mary. I don't know. The, I don't really know these people like that. And I think it's always funny too that parents be like, you don't remember them? You don't remember them? They was the no, I don't. I don't remember who they are. So, this guy comes over, right? And I, from the minute he came in the room, I already knew that he was one of those like, I guess, old time people, like them old men from back in the day. Now, you may understand what I'm talking about from me just saying that. If you don't, I'm gonna explain. So, those are usually the guys that when they come in the room, they want to be that that alpha guy in the room, right? That that kind of energy. So as soon as he came in the room, I'm like, ah, shit, I, he's one of those. Now, how, what are the signs of this, right? Normally, these are the signs that I see of these kind of things. When somebody comes in the room, one of two things they'll do. They come in the room and start complimenting all the women. That's that's the first thing they'll do. Oh, my God, you look so cute. They call everybody babe and you look so beautiful. That's the first thing that I'll say, I'll see, right? The second thing is they're usually very loud, right? Now, as I've said before, it comes down to clusters because in cluster. It, it comes down to clusters and clusters are seeing a bunch of these actions together at one time. Right. So once I saw those two things, I go, OK, this strikes me as kind of interesting. I don't write them off as anything. I'm just like, all right, I noticed the signs. Right. So later he comes over to me. Did he ask my name? Yes. He asked. He, he comes over to me and he asked my name. Honestly, honestly, even before he came over to me, I think it was before he came over to me. He was talking to somebody behind me in a living room about music, right? So I guess he's in music. Now, again, that's another sign. Cause I'm like, okay, he's in music. He's a producer. It sounds like he's over there. And I'm like, he sounds like he's over there trying to network, right? That's what it sounds like. Now, you may go, hmm, that's, that's a normal thing. People network all the time, right? Sure, they do network all the time, right? People like to network. However, he's probably 45, maybe probably older than that probably older than that right 
do you really think that he has a strong music career? Like, is that what do you think that this person? Do you think that he has a strong music career? Because I don't. I know people who are older who think that they're still producers and artists and musicians and things like that. And you go, okay, you're probably not seriously into these into these um what's what's what I'm looking for professions as you think you are. Right. But what you're doing is you want other people to think that you are serious about these professions. So what you do is you want to come in and you want to try and flaunt your intelligence about particular subjects, even though you yourself have not been successful in those subjects. So you come in. Yeah, you know, I know this person. I know I know Jay-Z's uh, manager's sister. We definitely went to school together back in the day. And she used to tell me that Jay-Z knows he liked this kind of music. So I already know there's that kind of guy. And so you sit in there and you go and. Bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that, well, that's how I look at it. But I feel like other people might go, oh, wow, really? That's so crazy. Oh, my God. So I'm hearing this behind me. So like I told you, we had the first one come in, start complimenting all the women. We had number two, where the guy comes in and he's really loud. I'm like, okay. Number three, he's trying to flaunt his intelligence. Actually, it was to another woman, which another another sign. He was doing this to a woman, which means he probably, was he trying to fuck? Maybe not. Who knows? Would they have done it? I don't know if they're related. I don't I don't think they are, but you know, hey. So that's number three. Here's number four, which it wraps all of this up. I'm sitting there. It's me, Melissa at the table, sitting down. It's uh a family members across from us. I think it's about four of us at the table, right? So this guy comes up and he asks me what my name is, right? Now I think that my first my first problem that I, which I don't like to do really, is I probably should have stood up to address him. That's probably my first thing. But the only reason I'm saying that is because that might have then lessened what he's about to do next. But I didn't stand up. I'm like, hey, what's going on? It was Dom. He put his hand out. I put my hand out. Shook his hand. Right. Uh, he said, oh, OK. What's, what's, he goes, all right, Donathan. Oh, he talks to me. What's your name, miss? Talking to Melissa. Right. I'm like, nah, it's not Donathan. It's Donovan. He's like, Donovan. I'm like, Donovan. Donovan. No, he first called me Jonathan, which happens all the time, which I don't understand. He's like, hey, Jonathan. I'm like, nah. He's like, okay, what's your name, miss? I'm like, it's not Jonathan. He's like, oh, what is it? Donathan? I'm like, nah. He's like, okay, miss, what's your name? I'm like, it is Donovan. He goes, oh, Donovan. I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, is it a big D or a little D? Right? Now, I'm like, what are you? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, whatever. It's a little deep. Like, oh, man, you can't do that, man. You can't let me press you like that. I'm like, so now I'm sitting there, right? Because my head is going. The fact that he would even say that to me leads me to believe one of two things. One, one being that he was consciously trying to press me, right? Now, here's an issue with that. I don't consider that as being pressed. That's not somebody pressing me, in my opinion. They making a joke or whatever they're trying to do that they're in their own world. I don't consider that being impressed, but he may think that's being impressed. So he was assuming that he was pressing me by saying that. And the only reason why he would even try to do that, I would assume, is if he felt like I made him feel insecure or uncomfortable. Now, the only thing I could think of that I would have done that made him feel like that is when I corrected him about my name in front of Melissa, who is my girlfriend. I mean, there were some other women there who were family members. But again, you pronounce my name incorrectly three times. So then he said the line about, oh, man, don't let me press you. You shouldn't let me do that. And I'm looking at him. I'm just like. Oh, I'm like, oh, God, you want to know? I'm like, you one of those people. So then he asked Melissa's name and then she told him her name. And he asked my else's name and told him the name. Did he say something else after that? I feel like he might have said one other thing after that when we were talking. Yeah, but he, like I said, he tried to tell me that or ask me, is it a little D or a big D? And my brain was, I'm like I said, this is my issue too. Also, I understand that these people are regular people now. They're not adults, but they're not mature adults, but they're still a lot older than me. So they asked me a question, is it little D or big D? My first instinct isn't to go, oh, let me clown you. Like, let me, if you're trying to clown me, let me clown you. Especially, like I said, if you're an older person, how often do you think that a fi- I don't know this person from, I never, I don't know who this person is. So for him to approach me like that and to me to uh, automatically go, nah, why your shoes look like that? Why your four, why your hairline so far back? Why are you trying to flirt women at, at this family function? What's wrong with you? Like my brain doesn't instantly go to that. But one thing I noticed too, 
is that I believe in, I don't know if I would say foreign cultures, but definitely Caribbean cultures. I've definitely noticed that their first instinct is to do that. I don't, I don't think he's Caribbean. I don't know. But I know that when I come in contact or interact with people who are Caribbean, their first instinct is to want to take the first jab at you. I don't, like I said, I don't know why that is. I don't go into a situation thinking that. I don't go into a room and go, oh, I'm going to have to insult him. I don't think like that. But it happens to me very often. So I don't know if it's a me thing. It could be. I do remember my roommate told me once when I was in, in college that uh, the reason that that would happen to me is because I come up with an air of arrogance around me, which is why people approach me or may approach me like that. I don't know. If you, I, maybe that's true. I've heard that before from other people, but I don't go into a room thinking that. Um, so while I was there also at this uh, function, right, something happened that was really cool. So my mom was uh, my mom is running for councilwoman in the Bronx, right? She's a political office that she's uh, getting. She's trying to get written in in December. So I did an interview with her, which is on my YouTube channel. And she had, I guess, I show people in, her, in the family about it. She had kind of just was talking. I don't know. I, I guess she probably showed somebody in the family. They probably spread it around to other people. So her doing this had led somebody at the, at the function to watch other videos that we had on our page. And it was crazy to me because I've never actually, not that I remember, I've met somebody that actually came up to me and was talking to me and said, hey, I watched your YouTube videos. And my brain was like, what? Like, what do you mean you watched them? She's like, yeah, I watched one with your mom and I started watching a bunch of other ones. And I kind of went in this rabbit hole for a couple of hours watching your videos. And I was just taken back because I was like, wow, people actually like sit down and watch the videos for hours. Like that was just it was just mind boggling to me because I even even though that's what I put the videos out for, for people for people to watch them. Hearing somebody say it was just like, wow, that's crazy. So I was just asking her, like, you know, what would you watch or whatever? And she was saying that she had watched one of our trips when we went to Italy. So during this trip in Italy, uh, Melissa and I, this is our first, this is our second trip, but our first trip out of the country. And my thing with that trip was I wanted Melissa to feel, to have confidence in herself to do things without me being there. I wanted her to feel like she can just, she can do whatever she needs to do, you know, whatever the problem that comes up is. Um... And I didn't want her to feel like she had to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't want her to feel like she was, um, what's that word? There's a word for it. I guess tied to me. I want her to feel like, yeah, we're both on a trip. We're just enjoying the trip. I don't want her to feel like I have to watch her on the trip. I don't want her to feel like she has to be next to me and scared on the trip. Um, so that was one of the things that we talked about while we were on the trip. So the family member I'm talking about was saying that, there was a time during the video where Melissa had left the house and went outside by herself to the store. Now she was trying to tell me that, uh, or she, well, we were having a conversation and she feels as though I should not have let her do that. I should not have. Yeah. I shouldn't have let Melissa go to the store by herself because something could have happened to her right now. We were going back and forth about this. And one thing that I know which happens with me a lot is and I, it's funny because I knew that she was gonna say this from the conversation. I can or I felt it in my soul. I don't know why I felt it, but I was like, mm, I know this line is coming, right? Here's the line. Here's the line. And if anybody knows me listening to this, maybe you will agree with this line. I don't know. It's a possibility. I don't. I'm gonna say the line that she said, right? If anybody knows me, I'm gonna take a second. I'm gonna give it like five to seven seconds, and I'm gonna let you guys think of what this person said to me. When we were talking about my decision on letting Melissa go to the store by herself, right? Okay. Go one. Let me count my head. Okay. So she said to me, Donovan, you have an answer for everything, don't you? Right? This is what she said to me. Now, I knew that's what she was going to say. Now, I've heard this a lot my whole life, even from when I was in the first grade and younger, right? And I think it's a very odd thing to say to somebody that you must have the answer for everything. Because if you come to me with an idea or a thought and I disagree with your thought, is it me having an answer for everything or is it me disproving your thought? I don't I don't know how that works. I don't I don't think I've ever said to somebody like, hey, you clearly have the answer for everything, don't you? I've never said that. 
But my argument in the case was, if I go with her everywhere she goes, how will she feel comfortable to do things by herself if she only feels comfortable when I'm there? That was my thing. Also, she went to the store, which is on the corner. She went there to get a pizza that we've been to that store maybe five times at while we were on or on the trip in Italy. So during the video, uh, it was a situation where we would just it had a long day. I think we had even might have got annoyed with each other, things like that. And she decided she was like, you know what? I'm going to get some pizza, I'm, some pizza. I'm like, all right, cool. So I stayed in the room and she went down the block and got some pizza. And she was saying that, you know, she's a woman and, you know, things could happen to her. And you got to be, you got to watch out for her and be careful. Now, I want, I, I wonder why that, why she feels like that. I don't know if it's a personal thing that she's went through, how she views women in, in total, because I don't think that if Will Smith and Jada had went on a vacation that he would have to walk with her to go get some food from the store. Like, I don't think that's something that happens. I don't know if older women feel like that i don't know if maybe she views melissa as younger or too young to walk by herself to the store i don't know what the case may be but i definitely don't think that it's there's an issue with melissa walking to the store on the corner to get a pizza by herself without me being there that means i have to chaperone her everywhere she goes now if she has said to me as in melissa hey donovan i'm about to go back to that town that we got on a train on i'm gonna go back you know take that four hour ride by myself i would be a little skeptical i'm like that's that's a lot. You gonna get on a four hour train ride to go to another city to get a sandwich? I feel like that's kind of skeptical. Um, uh, well, I'll be very skeptical about that. So I'm actually I'm going to ask you. Do you know why do you think? Do you think that? Why do you think that she said what she said about me? I guess watching. Well, not, well, not watching you, but like going with you to the store. I think that there's a very I don't know if I call it a narrative, mm -hmm. but it's not uncommon. It's it's. I feel like it's that whole protect black women thing. Mm, okay. Um, and being a woman, yeah. I don't know if it's, yeah. I feel like guys probably don't ever have to really think about this. Well, you're probably thinking of think about it, but I don't think guys really walk through the streets thinking. I might get kidnapped mm -hmm. or thinking, okay, this person might might try and grab me or something like that. I don't think guys really uh, think about that when they're outside. So that's something that's drilled into, fem into women's heads, mm -hmm. more or less. Like, okay, you know, don't go down that street, you might get raped. Don't go, don't go over there, you might, something bad might happen to you. To be very, like, sheltered, more or less. And I think it just comes from that. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking that, I don't know if you heard me in the bathroom. Do you think somebody would tell your mom that? Like, if she was with her man and they went out somewhere that he would say, don't go to the store by yourself. Yeah, I, I got to come with you. It depends on the area, maybe. Mm -hmm. like, at that point, we already, and I think it's the context I was missing too. Because at that point, we're already, in, we're already in Italy for a couple of days. It was like my last almost our last day in Italy mm -hmm. um and the place is not that far from the house and it was the middle it's like in the middle of the day it's kind of and another thing too is that like I told you I was just gonna go to the store mm -hmm. it wasn't kind of like a, you made me go out there by myself kind of thing mm -hmm. if I felt uncomfortable about going I would ask you to go with me mm -hmm. um and I think that's another thing too that I, maybe it comes off as if you 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 decided that I would go to the store by myself, but that was a decision that I made. Mm -hmm. So, because mm, I was wondering if, because I don't, it's it's weird. Like I said earlier, as far as adults being seen as adults and then adults actually being mature adults, because I don't know if older women would feel like, wow, he let me go to the store by myself. That's crazy. Like I don't know if her if she has a husband, if he would be. Like, if she would be annoyed that her husband... Or she would ask her husband to go with her to the corner store. I mean, if it's in your neighborhood, that's something that's familiar to you. But even if it's not, I'm thinking if you're going on vacation. Like, if we go on vacation to a... Let's say we're at a resort, and you go off the resort to the store. Off the resort? Like, yeah, like, not like... I mean, like, on down the block. Like, I'm thinking of a resort that would be in, like, a area that has a city-type area. Like I said, I think... I don't think we've ever... 
done that where I've gone off myself in the area by myself um, the first time going somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think it's more common for I, I think it's more common for if a female already kind of knows the area ish or is familiar with the area for that to be not a thing. But I can see wanting to have company going the first time. See, that's a question. I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to remember that. I want to ask women if they go on vacation with their man, do they feel comfortable going places by themselves? Because I feel like they do. Like my theory is that they do. If you have it by yourself? I mean, like. I mean, anywhere. Like, I don't. Like, I said, I'm not talking about. I'm about to go to a whole other city by myself. I'm just saying, like, hey, I'm about to go pick up. I don't know some groceries for the house or wherever we're staying. I'm about to go and schedule this appointment or schedule this thing with, uh, you know, the ATV riders. I, mean, I think that there, there's different things that um apply to that because are you are you driving yourself there? Are you walking there? Because there's less risk when you're driving. If you're um, going in a car, you're going to your destination, you get there, you go in and you're back in your car, which is right. like, you know, you're protected. So if you're driving somewhere, then I think that it's, you don't feel as risky or as, you know, shady about it. But if you're walking somewhere, that's that's a bit of a different story. If I have to walk there by myself in an unfamiliar place, I, I wouldn't be as comfortable. And it depends on the time of the day and all that stuff too. Yeah, but I'm, I, yeah, I'm more so thinking about it in the terms of just going somewhere without the guy that you're with going with you. However you get there. I'm, obviously, if, when we were in Naples, I feel like that would be suspicious to be like you have to walk down these blocks by yourself at nighttime at two in the morning to get a pizza. That's that's kind of wild. Um, I don't I mean, maybe in the daytime, maybe would have been better. I mean, again. That's the other thing too. We were familiar with that area. It, it wasn't like it was like we pulled up to a place we never been to, and you're like, "I'm I'm gonna go to a walk around." I'm like, Chicago. We went grocery shopping ourselves, mm -hmm. but after that first walk, I was like, "Okay, it's not bad. I could I could do this by myself more or less." So if we had to go, we obviously didn't stay there that long, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't trip on it to go have to walk to the grocery store again after that. But for I think for the first time when you're like not familiar with the area at all and once again you are walking I feel like definitely um, you'd want to go even if even if it's not with your your boyfriend like with your female friends or whatever so like check it out. And I think if I had to guess that your your GPS was on your location was sent to me if I'm I'm assuming that it was. Probably. Yeah, so I'm like even if something was to possibly happen there was always that as a as a backup but. Yeah, I, w I was just curious about how other people think about that. And like I said earlier, um, it was just crazy because we, we were having a conversation about the YouTube videos. And it wasn't a surface level, superficial conversation with somebody where, hey, I watch your videos. That's cool. It's like, OK, fine. We actually had a conversation about somebody who had an opinion on the video that they watched. And to me, that's the greatest. That's like it was an amazing feeling to just be talking to somebody that watched the videos and actually having a dialogue about what they saw in the videos. I just think that was really cool. Um, but the more important thing is the rebuttal thing. I do not think that I always have a response for everything. I think that I make decisions based off of a particular logic. So if you present to me an opposition to that logic, I've already usually thought about what you said and have the reason as to why I did what I did. I don't know if I'll call it the answer for everything. Maybe I should just not say anything and just listen and just not say nothing. Maybe I'll see how that goes. Maybe I just won't say anything when somebody says things like that and I'll just go and I'll ask questions. I think that's better if I just ask questions. Okay, so what would you do? Okay, so why do you think I should have done that? Okay, what do you think the dangers are of it? You go, hmm, okay, okay. But I don't agree with you. But okay, I see where you're coming from. Um, so maybe I'll I'll try uh, doing that. Uh, while I was there, oh, my my other cousin said she watched my to the podcast, the first two episodes. So I just think, like I said, it just it was just cool to hear people that are interested in what I'm doing um, regularly. Uh, so another conversation I had while I was uh, at Thanksgiving was with my cousin and uh, his dad. So we were talking about some things that he's going through. He's had some traumatizing situation that he's been through. And uh, he was saying that where he lives now, there's nothing to do there but drugs. And I guess, I think he said hangout. It's just nothing to really do. 
and the people that he's around they don't really want to do anything with their life and they talk down to people who decide that they want to better themselves so he wants to uh get into music he originally wanted to be an engineer i believe i think he wanted to work work on space on um on rockets i believe that's what he was doing originally but now he wants to do music so one thing i was saying to him is that and my uncle was having this conversation is i think it is far better to have a life where you've been traumatized than a life where you have not and the reason i say that is because you now have a layer of thick skin that most people do not have so you're more equipped to handle a lot of different problems so let's say that he is uh writing a song or he's dealing with a let's say a crazy executive at a company right somebody who's never had to deal with the traumas they had to deal with may break down from the emotional distress dealing with a person that lied to them about the contract or a person that said hey i own your masters if you have never had to hustle or you never had to deal with people not liking you or people not even not liking you people actually doing you wrong severely then when it happens to you you're going to break down but if you're already used to it you already had it happen to you and you already coped with it then when it happens again and again and again you already have the memory and the history to say you know what i can deal with it this is not something that's going to break me um so i i was saying that during the conversation that i think is great for him that he's went through what he's went through because he can now deal with more things going forward most people can like bump he can now deal with more things going forward than other people can not deal with that other people cannot deal with that was a whole tongue twister um so once he comes in contact or competition with somebody that has grew up in a very nice neighborhood and didn't have no problem growing up everything was all you know peachy peachy green whatever the term is they not have nothing on him they won't be able to compete with him and it goes to anybody listening too this is why I've said before, I would prefer to have had a lot of traumatized situations. I've had my fair share of them, and which is why I say what I say now, because a lot of things don't bother me. Like you can't, if somebody, this is why I laugh a lot, because I'm like, nothing is really that serious. If a guy is coming to me and saying, Donovan, I don't like this and that and this and that, it's like, okay, that's fine, but it doesn't really bother me. If a guy says, Donovan, I don't like your YouTube videos, or Donovan, I don't like the way you talk to uh, this person, it's like... All right, that, I understand that. It's not going to affect me because I've been through situations where I've had friends or who I thought were friends actually more or less have me put in jail. That's why I put it at. They would not vouch for me to not go to jail. And it's like, okay, if you've been through something like that, it's like, well, I don't, I don't really take none of these things seriously because I've been through a lot of other traumatic situations. So I always say that people who have had trauma are a lot better off going forward. Now, the, there's, the, there's a caveat to that. And the caveat is you have to have realized that you've experienced trauma and you have to have made the decision to cope and and move forward with that trauma. If you decide to stay in the trauma, then you're never going to actually you be able to use that trauma as a strength for you. Because another situation that we talked about is a family member who experienced their their uh, their parent get killed in a very gruesome way. And they are pretty much going down the path of just staying in jail now i think that will only happen because they have not decided to go you know what that shit was that shit was fucked up that happened to my fit my my mom and my dad that was that was wild so now that i know it was wild i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna just understand people can do crazy things i'm gonna live my life i've been in jail i understand jail politics i've seen my family member get killed so i know it can happen i know people are crazy but I'm going to take this and I'm going to get stronger from all of this. And I'm going to go out and pursue whatever I want to pursue. And once you have that, once you do that, it allows you to now become almost, I mean, indestructible at that point. Because imagine that. Imagine you see your family member get killed, right? Your mom or your dad get murdered right in front of you, right? And then you go, you know what? I was able to overcome that. What else after that could really break you? What after that could really mess you up? What you've seen your parent get murdered in front of you. Do you think that you're going to be broken because you lost a job? You're going to be broken because you got a ticket from your from work and you've already been to jail. So you're not scared of getting a speeding ticket. It's like it's, it is what it is. I've been in jail before. This is not a I got a speeding ticket. I can laugh at this. I'm not scared about this. But like I said, that can only come from a person going through different kinds of trauma. So we had that conversation during uh, my Thanksgiving, which is what last last Thursday. Um, 
So, and this the one thing I kind of want to touch on before I, uh, I guess I leave that alone as far as what happened last week during Thanksgiving is for some reason, I feel like I'm, I feel like because I am comfortable in who I am, it makes other people uncomfortable. And it's very, it's a very strange situation. And I, I believe that's why I deal with situations like I did with the guy at the, at the family function, because it's, I don't really care what somebody else is doing. So it's like, if you want to go and be all rah, rah and loud and things like that, it doesn't bother me. And like I said, most people are doing it out of insecurity. So they feel like, okay, I'm insecure or they are insecure. So now they want to try and, uh, I keep forgetting that word. I want to say inflict. I'm going to say inflict. They want to inflict that power on me. That's not the proper word. What's the better word for inflict? Mm, well, you guys have come up with the term or the word, right? Pretty much what I'm saying is they feel like they need, for them to feel good about themselves, they have to overpower me, right? And they feel like by doing it, they have to come take shots at me. They have to uh, make me feel or try to make me feel worse in situations. And another thing that comes from being comfortable in my own skin is that I'm not thinking about anybody else. I'm not thinking about what somebody else is thinking about me. So what happens, I believe, comes from that is because I'm fine and I'm not worried about, do they like me? Do they think that my shoes are dirty? Do they think that my hair is fucked up? Oh my God, I don't know. What do they think? I'm actually able to sit down and look at other people. And when I do that, it makes me become more compassionate because I'm able to understand other people. And I think it's, it's I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing yet. I'm not, it's something I, I thought about over the week. So I'm going to give it a, another example, a pretty much, not an example, but I'm just trying to say it in a way that I think is simpler if people didn't understand what I just said. If I myself am comfortable in who I am, I'm not worrying about what you're thinking about me. So now I'm looking out for other people because I'm like, I know I'm good. I'm fine. I'm confident. I'm good where I'm at in my life. I'm, I'm good. I don't have to worry about what you feel about me. So when I get into that space, I'm now worrying about how other people are doing for themselves. And I think this ties into what I believe was one of my toxic traits of wanting to help other people. So I'm not sure if that comes from being confident or if it comes from, uh, I don't know what, I don't know where that would come from. Huh? But yeah, like I said, that's something that I've noticed that the more comfortable I am with me, the more I care and notice other people's issues, because I may see that, okay, I have a problem with, mm, let me think of something, of relationships, right? So because I've already, because I believe that I have the solution to answer for relationships, when somebody else is going through relationships, I, I feel as though I can give them advice on it because that is not something I'm worried about. I don't worry about relationships. I don't worry about uh, how I am with my, with my girlfriend. I don't worry about those kind of things. So somebody that may have those problems of somebody cheating and things like that may have that on their mind. But because I don't, I may go, hmm, maybe I could probably, I want, I start noticing how they're feeling. I start noticing, okay, he told about his girlfriend. He says that he would, you know, leave her. He, he said that his girlfriend is mean to him. He said his girlfriend ain't shit. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. So I said, that was just something I kind of was thinking about over the last week. And you can take with that what you will if you were able to understand uh, what I was saying. It's very, very roundabout way. Uh, so a couple other things happened over the last week. Uh, people have probably heard about this. Actually, before I get to that part, um, this is some, some short things that I want to touch on. Uh, Diera from Diera, uh, the D and DK4L, um, put out a response on somewhere on on something. Right, I'm gonna read the response to you because if people know, I've I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. Uh, DK4L is a YouTube channel slash couple that I have watched for a couple of years now. So she put out a statement after the K in DK4L was caught grabbing another girl's butt. Now on this podcast, I have said before that I feel as though she's going to take him back because girls don't really leave you for cheating, especially, especially if you have tenure and especially if you have money, those things, I just feel like your girl's not really going to leave you for those other, it's not going to happen. Um, and if you're not, you know, acting a bitch about getting caught, whatever you do, I wouldn't call it cheating, but you got a girl's butt, you know, People were just saying, people were saying that I guess you shouldn't be twerking in the store or something like that. But this is a whole post about it. This is the, the context. I didn't know 
there was a whole story behind it. Okay, here we go. So they said, to the gang that's been rocking with us forever, this is for y'all. We have made the decision to cancel Vlogmas this year. We have never provided fake content and will not start now. As y'all know, we are very private people and that won't change now. We also want to provide real content, but we feel but we feel we cannot provide that at this time. Thank you guys for the support and we know our true supporters will continue supporting us through whatever, but also respect our privacy. We love you guys. Reading this again the second time, I definitely feel like she didn't probably she didn't write that. Um I got, the reason I brought it up is I feel like it's very professional. Um I feel like it was a perfect response to what's going on. She took the high road, she took the very mature and adult route. But the way it's worded, I just don't think that she wrote it. Maybe she might have looked it over, possibly. I just don't think she wrote that. Um, so then she tweeted, uh, Hi, Key, excited that we aren't doing Vlogmas this year. I know y'all are probably mad, but I'm hyped to enjoy my loved ones without the stress of uploading a video every day during the holidays. Remember, we did this four years straight. No complaints, but there's something I'm looking forward to. Just look. She said that. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely think they're going to get back together. I still think they're going to put a video out of them, of addressing this situation. I don't know if it's going to be long from that last message I saw. It's probably going to be short. They were seen out, you know, doing girlfriend, boyfriend stuff. So they're probably fine. And like I said, I only think they're going to address the videos in a sense of like, it will probably be a very short addressing. Like it won't be a long video, but it might be like, yeah, you know, we working through the stuff. We got better over it. We, you know, we're not perfect. We're still human being. Oh, I hate that shit. We're still human beings, and we all have flaws, and we are trying to work on it as everybody else would. The same way you have problems in your relationship. Some some shit like that. Um, so there was that I want to touch on. Uh, we are doing our own version of Vlogmas on our YouTube channel, which will be real estate related, where we will be posting, hopefully every day, of us making phone calls to agents for uh trying to get our first deal that will be what we're doing for this month we're gonna go hard and we're gonna try and get that back um and let's see a couple more things i want to talk about in the life update would be i love the rain now right so i have a friend and i think it's from when i was younger eh, not that much, eh, when i was like in high school he would always say to me that he loves the rain i'm like who the fuck loves the rain like why would you love the rain it makes no sense so it's always by association, I believe, why people like certain things. Whenever it would rain, he would get pussy. That was his thing, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, look, whenever it would rain, girls didn't want to go outside. So they wouldn't come to my house. When they come to my house, we have sex. And I'm like, huh. And even while we were friends, I think it even happened that girls wanted to have sex with him during it while it was raining. They wanted to cuddle and hang out with him and stuff like that. So now that I'm in the house, right, and I don't have to ride a bike anymore, I used to hate the rain. Because I already knew when I see the rain, it meant one of two things. Either one, I was not going to get paid that day because I wasn't going to work to work in the rain. Or two, I had to drag my ass out the house in the rain and wear a whole bunch of clothing to try and prevent myself from getting wet, which never really works, to ride around miserable for eight hours in the rain. My bike stopped working. Water hit me in my face. Food's getting wet. Bags getting wet. My bag stink. It's getting soaked. It's getting drenched. My socks are wet. It was terrible. So anytime it would rain, I would just hate the rain. The other day we were in the house and it was raining. I'm like, this is beautiful. Like to hear the rain, to be inside the house, to look outside and not have to even, even consider the association between biking and rain. It doesn't even come to my mind. Like me, it is there is no association of me having to go outside for money in the rain. It doesn't even cross my mind. And I think that for me, it was it was just a sigh of relief to see this, to see it rain outside and for me to be able to go wow, I can actually appreciate the rain from inside my house. So that's something I want to address too. Like I said, people who've been hearing the podcast know that I haven't been biking for probably like two months now, two, two months to man, two and a half months, maybe something like that. Um, so I just think, you know, I want to let the, the family know about that. Now, the last thing in the life update I wanted to address is about Kevin Hart. So if anybody's familiar with this, this is not a very, it's not going to be very long about it. Um, that's not the last thing, second to last thing. So 
Kevin Hart was in the room, in the clubhouse room, and I talked about this last week in episode 35 of the podcast, episode 35, episode 36 of the podcast. I talked about insecurities and entertainers and why it would behoove you to be insecure if you want to become an entertainer. Um, so people didn't like his, people were not okay with the stand up on the Netflix situation where he referenced his daughter having whole tendencies because she liked different guys in a short amount of time even though he said in the same special that he also understands why she did that because he met the guys and he felt the same way which is probably which is a joke that he that was the whole joke right so now uh he was on clubhouse right now you guys have no i feel about clubhouse it's an amazing app i love it on there I I loved it on there. Right now, my feelings on it are kind of starting to waver a little bit and starting to wane, but I I really enjoy Clubhouse a lot. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because during this situation, the average amount of people in the room of Clubhouse, I think the most I've seen is probably, I hope you think Tory Lane's room had 500 Tory Lane's. Like two? It wasn't more than Kevin Hart. You think Twilight's had more than Kevin Hart? Over five thousand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm saying. Cause I'm like, uh, my the thing. The reason was I was bringing it up is because Tory Lanez was this right now is the biggest uh room on on Clubhouse that I've seen. Which I, I thought was like a thousand, maybe two on there. Kevin Hart got on Clubhouse and at the highest, I think it was 5,000 plus people were in the room and the app stopped working. Like people, I couldn't even go in after hear what was happening anymore. The app, after he left, the app had froze. It was just, it was crazy, right? And he was on there more or less defending. It, it started off as him uh, entering a chat room because people had titled the room, Kevin Hart's not funny anymore. And it was supposed to be about comedians learning about comedy type stuff. So, yes, yeah, Kevin Hart funny. So that's what they were talking about. They wanted to figure out. They were just talking about comedy stuff. Regular comedians talking about comedy stuff. So he pulls up to the room, and then it was according to what I've heard because I didn't, I wasn't there, which was uh, sucks. They were saying that it was all strictly comedy related things. Now what happened next was I wonder if there were girls in the room. What happened next was people were annoyed with the fact of how he was talking about black people tearing black people down. They didn't like that. He used a reference of, uh, what's his name? Um, Hannibal Burris and Bill Cosby. They didn't like that example. He's another example of something else. And then from there, it, it took a, a, a wild turn. So he was in the room with women who were going crazy at him, who was upset. I don't even know if there were guys mad at him in the room. I don't remember if anybody talked about that. But people were just upset with how he was handling the situation as far as the joke he made about his daughter and just different things like that. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because, like I said last week, I think I even referenced Kevin Hart about people being insecure and it being successful for entertainers. Because when he went in there to defend himself about being funny or was defending himself about decisions that he made, it blew up all over the place. It was on Twitter. It was on YouTube. People recorded the room. It was on the shade room. Then it was on, uh, it was on, it was on something else. Was a, people doing podcasts about it. Joe Budden had talked about it in the podcast. So I'm wondering if Andrew Schultz is going to talk about it too. Oh, your computer about to die. You heard me? Okay. Um, so I'm just like, huh, that's interesting that, uh, that that is how that one went as far as, uh, Kevin Hart coming into the room, right? Because him wanting to prove that he's still funny or him wanting to prove that he did what he did for a reason, it, it made other people want, it, it brought more light to what he was talking about. So, I mean, like I said, that's, that, that's just my opinion, like I said earlier before, as far as insecurity goes with uh, being an entertainer. The more you want people to see you and be liked, the, the better you'll be at being an entertainer. Um, and... The one thing in the room that I only wanted to address that I felt like was kind of interesting was that one of the, well, two things. One of the girls called all the guys dick riders because they did not have the energy for Kevin Hart that they had before he came into the room when he got there. 
And I feel like then she came into other rooms and felt to felt like he could say, well, um, she came into other rooms and felt as though the guys were wrong for jumping on her for calling him a dick rider, for calling them dick riders. And I think it's crazy because whether they were a dick rider or not, once you call them a dick rider, you cannot be upset how they respond to you. What they say about you or to you or do to you as far as, you know, maybe muting you or kicking you out of the room. That's what you get for saying that. That's what you should, like. You can't. I, I always hate when this happens. I feel like it happens mostly with women and weak men is where they think that they can just do something to somebody else. And because they're smaller or weaker, there won't be consequences for that or repercussions. So she was like, well, they, you know, they were dick riding and things like that. Sure. But when they call you a hoe or a dumb bitch for doing that, you can't go. I can't believe I call me that. That's wild. So for, and I think she threw that dick rider comment out there on purpose because she wanted to kind of assert her dominance in a room where people were talking over her, which is not the way to do it because now guys, there's more guys that were there. They're going to have deeper voices than you for the, I mean, uh, probably they're going to have deeper voices, and deeper voices than you. So they're going to over, they're going to overpower you when they're talking. It doesn't make any sense to do something like that. And I feel like she was taking jazz at Kevin Hart about some, uh, something else. So if you want to go hear that, you can go on YouTube and listen to Kevin Hart um, Clubhouse. It's only 15 minutes because they, they didn't have the whole thing. So there's that. Um, and the last thing I'll talk about as far as Clubhouse goes, I definitely think that uh, Clubhouse is, 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 on the, is on the middle right now. They're on the fence about becoming a better, becoming where social media should go or tipping it to the direction that we don't need social media to be. And what social media does is it will exploit people's worst tendencies or human beings' worst tendencies. So one of our tendencies that human beings have is the mob mentality, which on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook is bad in itself. People are tweeting at you and things like that. But if you go into a room and people are talking to you and they're screaming at you and they're yelling at you, that energy is different than reading it on a tweet. People are people are yelling at you. You say something, they're cutting you off. They're yelling and screaming and things like that. You're trying to have a conversation. Now there's 20 people in a room yelling at you, 30 people yelling at you. So I don't know if that's better for social media or not. Now, the the positive I think about this is if you are a, if you're fake and you come into one of those rooms, people will expose you because or you will expose yourself in those rooms. Because when I'm talking to you or when somebody's talking to you, then and they ask you a question, they can see, oh, this is how you really respond to questions. You res- you respond like this. Oh, something's really wrong with you. Like, oh, you're not who I thought you were. Or oh, your response was kind of crazy. And I think that that is one thing that Clubhouse has. Until now, when you expose all of those kind of entertainers or, or celebrities or things like that, the actual genuine ones will rise to the top and then they'll get bigger than, they, than everybody else that's there right now. Now for the episode playback. Melissa's going through it right now. She's having her, her menstrual cycle. She's riding, she's riding her red bike. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. Melissa's riding her red bike. Um, So I think that last week's intro was fire. Okay. The thing I did differently with last week's intro was I let the music play a little bit longer into while I was talking. The only issue is I feel as though once Melissa does the clap after the three, two, one, I should probably have I should either be louder or have more energy it still sounds good with the music but I think it could be better if oh I got one of my hair sticking up back here I think it would be better if I was a little bit louder in the beginning but I do think that shit was elite level stuff right there um the other thing I don't know if I really said as well as I could have was the reason why it's bad to use products that don't solve your problem and they just kind of make it go away but they don't actually cure it is because with your body, if you try and push it down, it's almost like, um, think of it as if you had a tube of water or a boat of water, right? And you plug one of the holes. Mm, that's not a good example. Think of it like, I want to use electrical as an example, but I don't, I don't think enough people understand how electricity works for me to use it. So I'm going to try and use tubes and water to explain my issue with people using products that don't actually solve the issue or the problem. So think about you have like a tube, right? And it's a bunch of water that's pressing or uh, being 
being pushed through this tube. Now, the tube starts to crack, right? So what you do is you go and you put, you know, a bandaid on the leak of the tube, right? You put a little bit of cement there maybe and you go about your day. Now, another part of it starts to crack on the other side of the tube. And you're like, hmm, this is kind of crazy. I wonder why this is, you know, I'm put some more glue over here too. And then it happens again on another part of the tube. And now, instead of actually understanding that the tube is old, one, or the material for the tube is the wrong material for this water, you just keep putting things on the tube to stop the leak from happening. So what's going to happen, same thing with your body, is you thinking that, oh, I use proactive to cure my pimples and my zits, but your body is telling you, hey, this is an alarm. We're, start, we're setting the alarm for something that's going wrong inside your body. So now maybe, this will be an extreme example, let's say maybe your kidneys fail. Let's say maybe now you have high blood pressure. Maybe you're eating food that you're allergic to, but you're not knowing these things because you're going, okay, my zit is gone, I'm fine now. And this happens with a lot of different products that people feel like if I take this product and it's all my problem right now, but it comes back as soon as, the, as soon as I start taking this product, that's where you end up in a situation where you are actually making yourself worse by taking these products. You're not actually solving the problem. You're only making the problem progress over time and become a bigger problem. So that's something I want to address as far as why I don't like or why it's always a red flag for me when I hear somebody say, oh, this product uh, works amazingly until you stop taking it. That's what I hate. So today, like I said earlier, we have Donovan's questions. Can you scroll up? So today, like I said earlier, we have Donovan's questions. Uh, I have two, but I'm going to save one for next week because you never know what's going to happen. You know, I've been kind of uh, scarce with the questions lately. So which one should I choose? Okay, I like the first one. All right, so there are things that you learned a lesson from growing up. Everybody has different things, okay? No matter what they are, think of a lesson that you've learned yourself and think of how you learned that lesson. Now, would you tell somebody else to do that same thing that you did to learn that lesson, even though you know it may have been a terrible idea? Okay? Would you tell someone else to do the action that led you to learning a lesson, even if it was a terrible idea? That is Donovan's questions for today. So as you guys also know, the Bamboo Project Podcast is doing phone calls. Hit me up. Hit my line. DM the Bamboo Project underscore podcast. You can find me on there. Uh, we can get on the phone, have a nice little conversation. Uh, and if you have a topic you wanted us to discuss or something that we said that you want us to dig deeper into, DM that topic to the Bamboo Project underscore podcast. We are welcoming guests. We shoot between 10 and 12 on Tuesdays. And if you have not already, you can go check us out on social media. Mine is Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. And the amazing, beautiful Melissa Burnett's Instagram is Anita Byrne, A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. We have multiple different projects. We have the food project. We have the clothing project. We have the music project. We have the fitness project. We have the sports project. And we have the Bamboo Project podcast, which you listen to right now. Bamboo Project out.